Alright, good afternoon everyone. Andrew here, talking about my real world again. And uh, today I'm going to talk about three different war zones. Three different types of war zones I visited in a row throughout my uh, trip around the world in 2017-18. So, we'll start off in Belgrade, in Serbia, and go on to Istanbul, Turkey, and then finishing off in Batumi, in Georgia. So, I arrive on the train from beautiful Budapest at um, Belgrade Central Railway Station. And it was a very dilapidated place, all, 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 cranky old trains here, cranky old trains there, old bangers of trains really, you know. I got off the, got off the train, it was a dilapidated I mean, station, open front, open side, so there's a concrete slab being held up by two pillars to act as a roof. And what the purpose of that was for was it was only like 12 feet, 10, 12 feet squared. So I got off of there, and old leather faced guys sitting on seats smoking strong cigarettes. That's just what I needed. 25 hours on the train, I needed a fag. Pigeon shit everywhere. So I got took my rucksack off and found a, a nice dry spot on the bench. You know, I'm not sitting in anything. And rolled a cigarette. And I'm sitting, sitting there looking around in a close kiosk there. Through about it, black and filthy walls everywhere from the old steam engine drunk trained days. And there were three coppers standing by the exits, all with AK 47 assault rifles. And I thought, oh, what's all that about then? If it's a terrorist, who, what, isn't it? who in their right minds are going to attack this shit hole? <laughs> it's a dive of a place. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking on my phone, uh, Google Maps and that, and I thought I'd, <coughs> I'll just take a photo. So I'm scanning around, I take the photo, and this copper comes marching over to me. Okay, like, hey, no photo, no photo. And I'm thinking, so, okay, okay, no problem. Why? What's going on outside? Is there something special going on outside or what? So I, f I finish my fag, put my rucksack on, and head off outside. And when I emerged out into the street, I couldn't believe my eyes. As the street bear, bears around the uh, side of the station, every building in view was covered in bullet holes and shrapnel damage, mortar bomb shelling, corners of buildings missing. And there must have been about 50 bullet holes in every building. It was unbelievable. But all these buildings are still occupied. Commercial downstairs, residential upstairs, people's laundry hanging off balconies. Oh, I've got to gotta see some more of this. I'm dying for a cup of coffee as well, because I've been 25 hours on a train. I need a decent cup of coffee. So I go, to, go over the road to a cafe, sit there for an hour, do some people watching. And uh, after I'm ordering my large coffee, this way just comes out, a cup of coffee. Plonks it down on the table. I looked at half of, half of it's in the saucer. And I thought, uh, and I give her a smile. And she's smiling back at me. And I thought, where's the rest of it? I want a full cup of coffee. So I picked the cup up. And the saucer. She's smiling at me all the time. Poured it slowly into the cup while looking at her. And she's smiling at me. Her boobs hanging out. She thought what I thought was she thought. But I wasn't thinking what she was thinking, what I was thinking. If you get my drift. So anyway, she buggered off. And uh, I've got a hair in my mouth. That's better. I've seen all these people, uh, these old ladies pushing trolleys down to the local market for the day's trading. Some old guys playing cards and dominoes on a makeshift table on, in a gutter on a side street. Beautiful ladies strutting their stuff, going to work. And, over, and I, as I'm following these legs, over in the corner, a side street, there's this black and burnt out tank with a Serbian flag draped over the cannon. 
I thought we'd talk about pride. They've got a Serbian flag as if they won the war, but they've got a blackened tank been bombed. Uh, I mean, someone gave a, a live tank there, whatever. Uh, and there's coppers everywhere. There are coppers everywhere carrying guns, and they love their guns over there. Mm. I thought, well, I'm not going to get into trouble, I'm not going to take any pho photographs. So, unfortunately, I don't have any photographs of that. So, as I'm heading to my hostel on, on the tram, <coughs> I saw all these buildings, all these buildings with bullet holes everywhere, bits of building is missing, rubble everywhere. It's, it's just, it's like it hasn't advanced since the 1995 war with Bosnia. They've just stayed in the time warp. And it's like that everywhere I was walking around, the vicinity I was staying in anyway. <coughs> I walked, done some cruising around, <coughs> I come to this pedestrianised shopping street. All these modern shops, expensive shops, beautiful ladies strutting their stuff down the public catwalk. And uh, I thought, well, there is a sort of an upside to Belgrade, <clears throat> but I haven't got time to look at it elsewhere, so I have to go down and get my ticket to Istanbul. So um, I've got down, got down and get my ticket, and I still have the ticket somewhere. Yeah, yeah here we are. No, I'll come to this in a minute. Yeah. So I got the ticket to Istanbul, which was uh, forty-eight euros. I mean, Istanbul, forty-eight euros. But the kind lady who served me, she actually wrote down all the times so I need to change at Nice, Dimitrigrad, and Sofia. So you see the times there. Yeah, she was quite helpful. And the next morning. As I've gone down to get the train, 5.30 in the morning, there was only two other guys on the station, uh, two young fellows. I discovered there were two brothers who had come from Bulgaria in search for work. <clears throat> and we got talking, I said, what, what, uh, what do you think of um, Belgrade then? And they looked at me and thought, what a fucking shithole. It's a dive of a place. I didn't actually say dive, they said something else. Uh, but it meant the same thing. And never want to come back here again. I said, yeah, you've seen all these coppers walking around with these machine guns. Yeah, they're everywhere. We got stopped a couple of times, what we're doing, asking our passports and that. Oh, we're going, that's it, we're out. <clears throat> so I got on the train to, towards the Istanbul, and all through Serbia, I was passing this beautiful countryside, mountains, valleys, rivers, winding roads along the rail track. But the one thing, all the way down the embankment, all for miles and miles, there are all this rubbish from the truck drivers having their, having their stops, <clears throat> beer cans, bottles, um, food wrappers, wooden pallets, carrier bags, every kind of shit they didn't want, they dumped it down the, down the embankment. It was a disgusting sight. They have no respect for their countryside whatsoever. You would think after the devastation of the war, they'd pick themselves up and make themselves a better, pick, better uh, responsibility for their countryside. But no, they just didn't care less. So anyway, uh, we, we arrived in Sofia, dropped the guys off, had the trains, trains, and <clears throat> head off to Istanbul. Now, because of a major terrorist attack in Istanbul about three months before that, the train didn't go to the Istanbul station. It stopped at the border. We had to change trains and get onto a coach for a 20-mile trip into the city centre. So I got off the train at the border. Breeze through passport control, no problem whatsoever. Got me, uh, got me Turkish visa. Got my Turkish visa there. And I'm just going to get on the train, on the uh, on the bus, sorry. And this vicious looking customs officer said, Oh, you, you, come, come. What? He's taken me out of the station, down at the platform, and it's this long, elongated um, shed with black glass all the way down. So I entered there and all the other passengers are standing in line outside waiting their turn. And he says to me, do you have any food, alcohol or drugs? Uh, no. Really? Okay, right, empty the bag. He's turfed on all my stuff, out of my rucksack. Half of it's ended up on the floor. And he's, he's kicking it away to separate everything to have a look. And then, inside the hidden pockets uh, and the side pockets of my rucksack, He's found my medical supplies. And he, he's got the bag and he's gone, oh. and he's called out for his mates and he's raising this bag above his head like this as if he's won a prize. 
Yes, jackpot. And in come these vicious looking people. They stand around the table just staring at me like this with their eyes. And I thought, oh, I don't bloody believe this. Oh, God, no. Anyway, this bag of drugs, the problem was, when I, before I left England, I'd taken, I'd taken them out of their original packaging. So I can put them in my rucks, save space in my rucksack, and put them in there. But I put them all in this, I, I separate them all, and I put them all in these uh, clear plastic bags, similar to this. I don't know what you're thinking. And each bag was marked, there was a sticky label on there, marked of what they were and their use. Now, the drugs I had was paracetamol, ibuprofen, imodium, cyanotamps, day and night nurse, and steroids. No, not the steroids, joking on that one. Just the previous five, just the other five. And I had to explain to him what these tablets were. So this one's for a headache, a toothache, and this one's for the shit problems. Oh, oh imodium, shits. Uh, sinus has my uh, sinusitis day and night nurse for a cold or flu if I have one and he suddenly changed his tone and he said to me you have all these problems well no not now not all of them <coughs> I have sinusitis I have it the last six months but it, I might have something in the future because I'm traveling around the, around the world so I might need these things have you bothered to check and diagnose these tablets? So he said, right, okay, you go. Pack, come on, quick, 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 pack up all your gear. And I thought, hang on, you made this mess, you clear it up. I'm picking up off the floor, come on, come on, hurry up, hurry up. And I put all my rugs and jammed in and gone outside, I've had to empty the rugs, I can't reorganise it so it can all pack in there properly and tie everything up. And I head off, got on the bus, stumbled on the bus. Sat down now to watch all the other passengers go through the same shit that I just went through. And a sudden thought came into my head. And I thought, he asked me if I need food, food, alcohol or drugs. And I don't know. But he's found the drugs. But I explained to him what they were. It was a comical sight for everyone outside anyway. <coughs> but I had actually had, but one thing he didn't search was me. He never searched me at all. Which I found quite strange. But I, had, I actually had a Mars bar in my pocket. A Mars bar. But better still, I could have had a whole load of hashish strapped to my waist and got away with it. Midnight, Midnight Express Part 2. <laughs> this time I get away with it. But, no, uh, but I didn't have anything like that. But I could have done. So anyway, we, we were zoomed down the um, uh, motorway towards the city centre. And as we approached the city centre, Oh, what's that noise? I kept hearing what I thought was a cat being murdered. And then, I thought, what? And it wasn't, <clears throat> it was all these mosques. They called to prayer at sunrise. They have these huge loudspeakers all over the city. And they're blaring out this song. Uh, every sunrise, every morning, they call out this for them to come to the mosque to pray. How can you imagine in the summer? When it's four o'clock in the morning at sunrise, they're blaring out. Uh, I, think, uh, I don't think so. I need my beauty sleep. Oh, go away. I know oh, these people actually get up at four o'clock in the morning, go to the mosque, have a prayer, and they go home to bed again. Why don't you stay in bed and pray later? It's part of, part of, part of, part of, part of my words. That's part of their religion, so they have to do it. So anyway, I'm in the uh, I'm in the hostel. I guess I'll go for a walk. <coughs> I ended up in this, just around the corner, in this pedestrianised mile long street where down the end of the street was where this major terrorist uh, bombing happened a few months earlier. And all down the street, on both sides of the street, every 50 yards, there was a heavily armed soldier or an armoured truck or tank, small tank, just guarding the public and safety. I thought, is, is war going to break out here in a minute or what? They've had their terrorist attack. It's very unlikely it's going to happen again in the same place. I've never heard of one happening again in the same place. But they're just reassuring the public. 
that their their safety is in the hands of the of the military, showing all the force of the guns and everything else. My water pistol is more probably powerful than their rifle, you know. So anyway, that was uh, Istanbul, and uh, so the next stop would be Batumi. So I head off down the bus station a few days later, get the bus to Batumi and Georgia, which stopped off at uh, Trabzon, five o'clock in the morning. Freezing cold, minus eight Celsius. All the waiting rooms, all the building is shut. Uh, I just sit outside on the bench, two uh, two hours to wait. And then uh, this tiny, rusty old minibus comes crawling into the bus station. And up pops this guy, wobbly leg, one leg shorter than the other. What wobbles over to me like this? Batumi, Batumi? Uh, yeah, yeah. So he picks up a rucksack. Hauls it over, marches over to the back, into the minibus, opens the back doors and picks his mic sack up and uh, just, he throws it in. I'm thinking, really? Slams the back doors, okay, 10 lira, 10 lira. But it wasn't really great, just happy to have a customer, that's just the way they speak. A bit like Glaswegians, when they talk to you, they're always aggressive, like they want to punch your lights out, give you a Glasgow kiss, a bit like that. So I give him his 10 lira, which is about what, one pound fifty. And we head off through these little tiny villages in the middle of all this snow everywhere. And then uh, pick up a couple of passengers from this little village and then we head off to this uh, other town. And all of a sudden the road disappears again. And uh, this is all dirt tracks. Because of all the snow, it's all turned to slush. So it's dirt tracks, all the lorries and uh, trucks coming in making deliveries to the local town. So he, pull, he pulls off to the side of the road and uh, gets out and goes into the bakery. Gets a load of pastries. Oh, that's unusual. He just stops off and helps himself to breakfast. That's the way it's done over here. And uh, so he comes back with a big bag of pastries, one stuck in his gob like this. And he comes round to us three passengers and gives us these pastries, a bag of pastries each. And donuts or ice cake or something like that. Oh, yeah, they're lovely. Oh, beautiful. So he's got into the, into the uh, driver's seat Rammed it into gear, put his foot down, slammed his foot down, but the wheels are spinning. We're not going anywhere. All we're doing is just sliding. We're just sliding to the side like this and we just come to a stop. That's it. We're, we're stuck now. So he gets out the driver's cab, looks at us, our passengers, and he's just gone. Blah, 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 blah. Starts calling out to him. There's four guys hanging around the bakery. Oh, that's happening. These four guys come over, dogs him around the back. He must have, he wants them to give us a push. Now, so what I've just seen outside, I know what's going to happen. So I've gone around the back of these guys, and the driver's put it in gear, ran his foot down the side, and you can hear the wheels screaming amongst all this all this screeching from the from the four guys at the back. <laughs> and they come and they come they come up they come past the side window, covered head to toe in brown slush. I just pissed myself laughing I couldn't believe it oh what the driver got out and said ooh blah 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 slagged off them the four guys what are you doing what are you doing and I see there's another guy out of the bakery he's gone around the corner he's got into his tractor and big forks at the front and drove his tractor around and then the driver said to us oh you stay you stay okay you stay here you stay here the tractor's gone around the back and the forks lifted up the back of the truck, the back of the bus. I've held onto the handrail as I'm lurched forward. Picked up the back of the bus and moved it three or four metres to the side, dropped it onto uh, a dryish part of the road. Gone round to the front and done the same thing to the front, lifted it the front and dragged it over. So now, we're, now we've got some traction. Driver's gone to a seat and we're off. Zoomed off. I'm looking at four guys. And, ah, Jay's chasing him in a fist. Don't you come back here again, we'll kill you, you bastard. So we're headed off. Anyway, drops us off at Batumi. I had to go through uh, a huge, long passport control. It's about a mile long, never ending. And this woman passport, so she's looked at my passport, squeezing eyes and stitching, making sure it's not fake. And, and she's looked at the Russian passport. Uh, why you come to Georgia? because uh, I'm travelling around the world uh, in the winter and you go to Russia? Yes, I go to Russia. And she said, you're crazy. 
Øh, ja. <laughs> ja. Okay. Så er jeg stemt som parsrum med en tur som fæsen. Okay, have a nice day. No, I I. Anyway, go on the minibus on the other side to take us in the five mile, five miles into Batumi. And it's quite a nice area, Batumi actually. It's some modern buildings and that. But where I was staying, the hostel I was staying was at the north end of the town, which I picked because it was close nearby the central train station for where I needed to get to Tbilisi. So we got up, turned around this corner, and then the road vanishes into thin air, and we've hit this. It's like they've run out of money to build the asphalt, you know. And we hit this dirt track again, mud baths everywhere, potholes, boom, bouncing around like this. Jesus Christ! Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of photos in, of the area and, and a video of a street where I was staying. Look at the potholes here. And you don't know if they're deep or shallow. But that's, they're everywhere there. It's like, like, it's like a war zone. Smoke coming out the ground. Cars just parked everywhere. All kinds of dodgy vehicles. And <coughs> so I've dodged all these potholes and I eventually got to the hostel, dropped my bag off and gone out for a walk. <coughs> uh, done a little bit of filming, but <coughs> not much. I was looking for a bar because I, I, I need a beer. I couldn't find a bar anywhere. And I walked past this kind of, like, can you describe it as a waiting waiting room area, like a train station waiting room. And there was a couple of old guys uh, drinking beer there. I thought, is this, is this a private uh, transport place or, or is it a private club or what? So I'm going in and can I have a beer? Yes, yes, come in. She's in, you have a beer. Sixty like people a pint, lovely, with a big head on it. And, uh, lovely. And, uh, I sat down talking to these guys and they were very interested in my adventures of travelling around the world and football, they love talking about the English Premier League and how Serbia are going to win the World Cup one day. Well, they might well do. Huh? They got to the World Cup final two years ago, didn't they? They're doing alright. So anyway, I left these guys and I went off down to the train station to find my uh, uh, train and put the ticket to Tbilisi for the, early the next morning because I, <coughs> I was leaving about 5.30, 6 o'clock the next morning. It was like four hours to Tbilisi. So I got back to the hostel and have a shower and change and freshen up and have a talk to this South African neighbour of mine who, quite frankly, talks a lot of bullshit half the time. I just lent him an ear just to be polite. You know? So then I <clears throat> I went out for the evening and looked, looked around for someone else, something to eat. I couldn't find a restaurant either. But Everything's closed around here. What, what is going on here? Even the supermarket, it was only like seven o'clock. Why is everything shut? And I walked past this alleyway. This alleyway I could see a light on. Some establishment. So I'm like, what's that? It doesn't look like a house. <coughs> and also I looked in the window and there's all these guys sitting, about 20 guys in this in this room eating. I like, must be a place. And on the door it says private club. Oh, I wonder what's happened here, right? So I just opened the door and the waitress said, oh, Yes, come in. Oh, can I can I eat here? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. come in, come in, she says. So as I've gone in, I closed the door behind me. And I next hear, Hey, amigo! Hey, amigo! Come, come, sit, sit! It's the two guys I met in the bar earlier that afternoon. And uh, they said, Hey, this table is laden with food and beer and vodka and bottles of wine they're in for a party a banquet you know yeah sit down sit down uh, you want steak waitress and called out the waitress bring him steak bring him steak uh, so come bring me a steak and fill up a glass of wine bring me a beer and uh, little shots of vodka uh, vodka blah, blah, blah. so and then, and then uh, we are talking away in english talking about football and uh, other things in life but the guy next to me, the older guy next to me, didn't say a word because he couldn't speak any English. And uh, I'm sitting there and topping up a glass of wine and just got to drink it down in one and then put the glass on top of your head. And you, you drunk it. That's the way to do it. Drink it all down and stick the glass on the head. Get into the spirit of drinking. And this guy's pulled it. The guy next to me has pulled his phone out of my pocket and started like talking rapidly in, in Georgian. And he kept looking at me. Smiling, oh, holy shit, who the hell is he talking to? It must have been a Georgian mafia. 
one of these people. So he's, when he's finished, he's put the phone down. Looked very straight in the eye, smiled at me, yeah. put his arm around my shoulder. Everything okay now, he says. Everything okay. I thought, oh, shit. <clears throat> see, I had a younger guy, so as you can see, I'm a bit worried here. And he goes, yeah, there's more vodka, there's more wine. Drink, 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 it's okay, it's okay. <clears throat> I thought, well, I'm here now, what's going to happen next? What happens next, happens next. Anyway, five minutes, five minutes later, this little 12 year old kid comes in and sits down opposite me at the table. And the guy, the older guy said, ah, okay, this is my son. Ah, the older guy said, yes, he, he called his son out because he speaks English, he can translate to his father. Because his son is taught English every day in school, so he's fluent in it. 12 year old kid, and he's sitting there, he's drinking beer. Great, also, he loved talking about football. He loves Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo, and David Beckham. And me and the other guys were having a great old time eating, drinking, laughing, and everything else. And this young kid is it's on three pints, three pints of uh, beer. He's down them, and he's still sober. I'm completely wasted. I am all this vodka and wine. I don't really drink um, uh, uh, spirits as a whole. I'm just a beer drinker. No, I'm absolutely wasted. And I have a great old time. And at the end of the night. I say no, I got some money over there. I said, no, 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 no. No. We pay. You're a guest. You're you're our guest. And we pay, you know, I didn't have to pay anything. I had a lovely steak dinner, drink like a I got drunk as a skunk, full up of food. And these guys were absolutely brilliant. And we exchanged contact details and we're still friends to this day on Facebook. I chat with them now and again when I'm travelling around the world. But then uh that's the story of uh, Batumi, Istanbul and Belgrade. Different war zones in their own right. But all very friendly, sort of, apart from Belgrade. <laughs> Shithole. But uh, yeah, well, I recommend going to Istanbul. Yeah, that's an experience going to Istanbul, that is. Um, but yeah, if you like the video, then uh, uh, first like or share with your friends. Make a comment down below if you wish. And I'll do some more of these videos if you want to uh, me to talk about uh, a place you, you you want to go to that I've been to and make a comment if I've been there. Yes, I'll gladly make a video of it. But um, yeah, that's the story of uh, Istanbul, Belgrade and Batumi. Um, I want to make one of um, China, but with the current situation in the world at the moment and the delicacy of Chinese infrastructure and environment, it's a little bit tricky at the moment, so I'm trying to work my way do a script to a good video so it doesn't do anything derogatory to them. But anyway, there's a, there are a lot of stories I want to get to as well, like oh, Australia, Thailand is another good one. I'll get to Thailand another day as well. So for now, I'll say goodbye and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye.